Hi everyone and welcome to BrickCats. As always, if you drop a like or subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. Your support means more brick mock reviews in the future. Today I'm going to feature the RZ-1 A-Wing Starfighter, again designed by Jarek and available on Brick Vault. The smallest of the Rebel Starfighters in Kamen and Lego, this model is full of details despite its small size. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and the conclusion. If you're watching this review, I assume you've watched the Brickfall video, you've purchased the instructions, or you're interested in purchasing them, and I also assume a base level knowledge of what this model is and Bricklink's ordering system. The A-Wing comes in a couple different variations, and the one shown here is the patchy red version. As I think this is the one closest to what we see in Return of the Jedi, although screen time for the A-Wing is pretty limited. My disclaimer on this review and all my mock reviews is that I only use genuine LEGO bricks. I always purchase the instructions for myself for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. Finally, before we take a look, one administrative note. The Brick Vault video shows the RZ-1 A-Wing and the R-22 A-Wing from Star Wars Rebels in the same video. You only get the instructions for either the RZ-1 or the R-22. You don't get both instructions in the same purchase. And with that, let's take a look. Like all of Jarek's models, the A-Wing looks incredible. It's really impressive to me that all the angles look accurate, even in such a small space. There's not much in the way of greebling, as you would expect, because the A-Wings have a smoother exterior, which is very nicely done with tiles, slopes, a few panels, and some sideways building. I really like how the section behind the cockpit gradually tapers from front to back, and the canopy shape matches the curve nearly perfectly. Blasters are simple affairs, and the concussion missile tubes are built into each side. The engines dominate the rear of the fighter, and Jarrett gets the slight cant of each fin assembly just right using hinge bricks and panels to limit the offset. The underside is also smooth and more or less mirrors the top. Retractable landing gear either folds up to be nearly invisible near the fins or underneath a small flap allowing the fighter to sit fairly sturdily on a flat surface. There are no colored discs on the back of the engines to indicate an engine glow, but it would be simple enough to add a 2x2 or 3x3 dish if you'd like. The double hinged canopy is really cool just for its novelty. In addition, it allows a decent range of motion in a pretty small space. The cockpit is simple with some tan to represent seat cushions and a small trans yellow boat tile for an instrument panel. It also has printed detail tiles on either side. The minifigure doesn't stud in, but there's just enough friction to keep him or her there in place, and there's not much room to wiggle around when the canopy is closed. Like I said in the introduction, this is the patchy red version, and you can see some tan highlights in certain places and what looks like a near miss on the back right side. I've only built the dark red patchy version, but at least in the videos, the green, blue, and red versions also look really good. And I'm sure you can't really go wrong. The notch in the nose is a great little detail. And since the angled section of the nose is 12 studs long, the gradual narrowing is very smooth on both the top and bottom. The patchy red RZ-1 A-Wing uses 153 elements and 607 parts. Most of them are pretty common, and the only one I really had a problem finding, and in the end decided not to buy, was the hinge plate 1x2 locking with one figure on end, undetermined type, part 44301 in dark red. 
This part is very expensive in North America, and it seems to be expensive in most other places. I tried a couple of colors on to see how they looked, and while this is subjective, I think dark gray looks the best, and that's ultimately what I ended up putting on. Part 44301A is effectively the same part, and also comes in dark red. This is a good substitute, but you're still likely going to pay about $2, and it's also not very common. So you'll likely add a store and incur additional shipping charges. With other color schemes, of course, this is less of an issue, as this part is slightly more common in other colors. And speaking of other colors, there's a little bit more of a process to generate the parts list for those. If you purchase the instructions, you get a number of files, but for colors other than red and patchy dark red, you get a file called aw-color.xml that contains 28 elements with yellow as the default color. These 28 elements are the only ones that matter, assuming you want to keep the white or patchy parts of the fuselage, and I'll get to those later. To generate the full parts list, you upload aw-color.xml and then upload aw-colorless.xml or aw-colorless-patchy.xml, which are the remainder of the parts you need. Then you need to go to your wanted list and search for yellow, and then uncheck part 4265C, that's the Technic Bushing 1 half smooth, and apply the color that you want. Note that not all of these parts are available in every color, so you do have to do some validation to make sure that you can actually buy the parts in the color that you want. This isn't a big deal, but I was a little surprised this was not mentioned in the README file, and I think this would be a little unintuitive for a beginner who just mastered ordering parts through BrickLink. The other note on parts is that the A-Wing is kind of a stocky fighter, and the main body is fairly thick, which means there are a fair number of hidden parts. Like I said in my Y-Wing review, and like I should have said in my X-Wing review, it would have been nice if those were indicated in blue or some other odd color to help you determine if you can use your existing inventory or not. If you do have an existing inventory of spare parts, I highly encourage you to go through the instructions to see which parts are hidden and substitute what you have to to further reduce the cost. For the patchy version, you can definitely substitute light tan or even dark tan for some of the smaller pieces that do appear on the outside of the model, but for the clean white version, obviously I would stick with just white. This is a pretty quick build, and it's also a lot of fun. It took me about an hour. I didn't have any issues in the instructions, and even the more esoteric connections aren't very difficult. And since there are only 607 parts, finding each one is simple enough if you're like me and just dump everything into a big pile. The fighter's shape and relatively solid construction means that there aren't the issues that you have with models like the B-Wing, for example, where it's difficult to figure out where you can apply pressure without breaking everything. The only areas you want to look out for are probably the nose, and you want to be a little gentle with the fins and en engine assemblies but otherwise, no problems. Overall, this is a pretty solid model that you can handle without being overly delicate. The most sensitive parts, at least the ones on mine, are the two white cones on either side of the nose and the top and bottom of the front fuselage. These are tiles and they're only anchored, well, they're only studded in at one end, but I'm hard pressed to think of a time when you'd actually want to hold this by the nose anyway. The aftmost engine wheel is not held in place, it just slides onto this bar. So occasionally those get pushed towards the front of the model. Again, not a big deal, you just pull it back. The cannons are attached with a single stud, so those come off relatively easily. And sometimes the assembly that connects the cannon to the fuselage also comes off. Again, fairly easy to put back on. To get the tilt of the fins and engines, Jarek uses hinges, so there's little play because the offset created by the panel pieces isn't perfect. There's probably one to two millimeters of play. Of the three Rebel Fighters by Jarek that I built, this one has the most robust landing gear. But like the others, they don't lock in place, so it's a little susceptible to collapse if you bump it the wrong way. There aren't instructions for a stand included with this model. 
I do recommend making one. With some minor surgery and some Technic plates, you can use Jurek's X-Wing stand, or make your own if you've got the parts lying around. You need to remove most of the bottom tiling to uncover where you put the Technic plates, and they go right in between the 4x2 wedges at the center of the ship. I used a black one, but light bluish gray, white, or pretty much any neutral color would be fine. I'm not quite sure exactly how much the A-Wing cost me when I ordered the parts back in June of 2020, but I ran the parts list for the patchy red version on December 24th, 2020. As specified, the algorithm returned a pre-shipment total of $96.95 from five North American stores, which would likely equate to about $120 with shipping and tax. Substituting part 44301 with dark bluish gray instead of dark red, brought the total down to $81.69 from five stores, which is likely going to be about $107 with shipping and tax. This is the lowest I was able to get in terms of stores and raw cost, as any other change I tried to make resulted in this weird game of whack-a-mole, with parts being expensive that shouldn't have been, like the 6.6L bar in black, and even trying to substitute a different color for that, it just didn't work out. For the red A-Wing, which is Lego red, not dark red, and not the patchy version, I ran the algorithm with no modifications, and I got $86.85 from three stores, which is about $102 with shipping and tax. So in terms of price per piece, this model certainly isn't the greatest, but I definitely think this is the best looking A-Wing model in minifig scale, and it's very durable for a mock. Even if price per piece is not great, this is still the least expensive of the Brick Vault fighters, and it's a very accessible build. The only real deviation from the instructions that I recommend is to modify the underside to accommodate a simple stand. Jerax A-Wing is available from Brick Vault, and I'll leave a link in the comments. Thanks as always for taking the time to watch my review. If you've built this model, have something to share that I left out, or have a question I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Also consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Instagram. Thanks very much, and I hope to see you back next time.